Alex from Temple Sounds, thank you for agreeing to be You're interviewed welcome. Hi. by Charlotte. Um, now we've got a few questions here. First of all, what kind of music therapy do you offer? I offer group sound baths using overtone emitting instruments, like gongs, singing bowls, um, various other bits and pieces. One-to-one -one therapy, uh, I do mantra evening events, that's about it really. Okay. What type of music therapy is most popular? Do you think I would have said kind? the group sound baths. It's it's a kind of group experience where, but individual at the same time, where people can zone out, and relax after work if they're stressed. How many people do you often do you know, normally get at something Probably like that? Ten, in between ten, you know, I've I've played for over a hundred people, but you know, usually ten, twenty, something like that. And um, what kind of venues do you host them in? I like playing outdoors, but a nice big venue with good acoustics is what I want. Okay. How do you feel it helps your clients or what feedback have you been given? People who are suffering from anxiety, stress, depression, they come and they go away feeling better. But a lot of people come just to experience it at the same time. They've heard about it, they want to know what it's all about. They feel better too. Uh, all, all sorts of people, all sorts of ages, men, women, you know, everyone comes. Cool. Have you seen an increase in the amount of clients joining music therapy? There's or? been a, a huge increase in all aspects of it, from the practitioners themselves, um, the clients, people, the awareness of people when I started. There was only a few of us doing it and it was mostly sort of singing bowls and it's kind of a meditation rather than lying down people would sit up um, but now it's, it's a lot more about um, relaxing as opposed to a meditation it's changed slightly and a lot more people doing it which is a good thing but not everyone is proficient um, which is can be negative because people can't play the instruments I, th I think personally you need a kind of a bit of a background in music to be able to can't just straight away do it. People need a bit of training or, you know, a bit of experience playing some other instruments really. So what kind of background and training have you had? I, <laughs> I train myself, okay. Um, so I've been, I've been doing it for about 28 years. So there weren't, there weren't many people doing it, so kind of what I was doing people are, people are doing what I was doing, you know, years ago. So mm -hmm. there's only a few of us originally. Um, so I, I, I kind of, one of the originators, I suppose, in the West. So there we are. <laughs> How did you get into it then? My deafness. I was, I was completely deaf. I, I sang, I lip read. Um, and I was living in a grotty flat. I didn't have any a job or anything like that. And the guy before me had bought a singing bowl, the guy who lived in the flat from China. This was like a long time ago now. And I arrived in the post, I didn't know what it was. Struck it with a little wooden stick that came, it was a tiny cheap little thing. And yeah, I could hear it. So I went from there, I thought, oh my goodness, I can actually hear this. So I was at my lowest point during that time, you know, I'd lost all my hearing, my job, kidneys were failing. And yeah, it made me feel better. So I was like, you know, started playing it on the rim and stuff and got some more bowls and became obsessed with it to the point now where I've got a million bowls and I, I import them and part of my income and my job is to actually help people find the right bowl for them. So you're selling to a whole range of people? Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, some of the bowls are really expensive, like thousands of pounds for Lingham and we've got, you know, ch um, much cheaper, newer bowls. It's for everyone, the collectors buy these bowls. Uh, purely to put on a shelf and other uh, therapists buy different stuff, you know, to use. Thank you. So, have your clients given you any feedback on how you might be able to improve what you offer? They have, actually, yeah. Um, so, I've, I've worked with other people in the past and a lot of people, a lot of clients have said, just do stuff on your own. They like what I do, they don't like what the other people do. So, it's Although I like to collaborate with others, um, that's part of music, isn't it? Collaborating. I don't like playing on my own, but uh, yeah, 
and it's also cheaper if, it, if it's just myself so there's no one else to pay is there so you don't divide the money so yeah so, so going forward I'll be playing on my own that was my next question going forward is oh, slightly different is there sufficient funding to develop a greater provision of music therapy I wouldn't say there's any funding at all it's all it costs a fortune so so if it, there's a gong just there and that's three three thousand three hundred pounds to buy a gong that big and it's, it all comes out of there's no funding as far as I know have you ever applied or searched no, for funding uh, no <laughs> <laughs> I like to do things on my own but no 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 I'm not I'm not kind of dependent on anyone really I don't know maybe there is funding I've no idea. I know that uh, a friend, uh, she, she's from Swansea, I think, but a Polish Polish lady, she got some funding from Swansea Council to set up like a, a women's therapy group. But it's purely for women. There's no men involved. Um, but she had, I think she had to raise about five grand and they matched it then. So there are some provisions, I think, now, you know, but I don't know if that would be the same for men. If I set up a male group purely for men, would that, would that, I doubt it, but anyway, that's another story, isn't it? But you were telling me that um, you've got a project coming up soon, working just with men in the prison? Yeah, that's right. I've had to postpone that, actually, because I was feeling a bit poorly. But yeah, there's men, and we'll be doing um, drumming and Buddhist mantras. So that, that's a really positive thing. They're looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. So that'll be, like, next month, I think, now. And... Um... Would you class what you do as music therapy or sound therapy? I would have said it's sound therapy. Uh, I am a therapeutic musician, so yeah, sound therapy. But at the same time, when, when we do mantra events, it's very musical. And, and, and you can zone out in that and meditate. And when you feel great after the euphoria, and that's music. So I, I think there's a crossover between the two. Okay, thank you very much for Thank you time. very much. <laughs> thank you.